Hello there, thank you for joining me again. Welcome to a tutorial all about cutting out patterns and tracing them. So some materials that you're gonna need are a ruler, preferably a longer one if you have one, and you're gonna need some pattern weights. These are what mine look like. If you don't have something like that, you can just go around your house and find some things that are weighted. You'll also need some tracing paper. I am not cutting my pattern directly from the pattern paper. I'm gonna be tracing it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then you'll also need whatever pattern you're working with. This is mine. And if you happen to have um, so liberated gypsum skirt, awesome. That's what I'm gonna be working with. If you don't, it doesn't really matter because I'm just gonna be talking about general things that you'll find on patterns and how to trace them. So thank you for joining me. So the skirt that I'm working on today is called the gypsum skirt. It's from So Liberated and soon I'll also be doing a tutorial um, on how to make the skirt. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Now I picked this one because it looks very simple for beginners. Um, the pattern as I took out this paper I'm looking through it and it looks pretty simple and straightforward so I think it's going to be a good piece for a beginner. Now when you're looking at the size chart, you're first gonna wanna take your measurements with a measuring tape. So I took my measurements um, and I retake them about every month just to check. And because this is a skirt, I'm not gonna worry about the bust. I'm gonna be more concerned about the waist and the hip. So even up here, it says it's an elastic waistband. So um, you can use your waist or your hip measurement because with the elastic waistband, um, it can stretch or you can tighten it to fit yourself. So my measurements are, they don't fall exactly on a size 16 and you probably won't fall exactly on any of these sizes as well. That's pretty typical. So my waist is actually larger than my hips. Um, my waist is really more about 36 right now and my hip falls um, more at about a size 10. So what I usually do, especially with the skirt, because I think it's gonna be flowy and pretty loose fitting, is I went down a size on my waist. So this isn't actually my waist, but I know that the elastic will stretch and it'll be okay. And for the hip, it's definitely gonna give some room for movement because my hip is really over here. Now, um, I'm also making a toil and a toil is sort of like a practice skirt that you use with a different kind of fabric, a real cheap fabric, um, just to make sure that everything fits you. So um, I don't actually make this with my really nice fabric. I do it with a toil first and check the fit. So this might not fit me and that's okay. Then I'll know if I need to size down or if maybe I just need to grade and I'll explain just a little bit what grade is. So. That's how I picked my size. I just kind of went in between, somewhere in between where my waist and my hip lie. Um, and now I want to move to the pattern piece to show you what that looks like. So it is a little overwhelming. I'm sure you might feel that as a beginning sewer. I feel a little overwhelmed when I take out a piece of paper like this because all you see are just lines everywhere, right? Um, so I'm gonna start right now with the back of the skirt. Now the back of the skirt, you'll see all of these different lines, right? And they all represent different sizes. So you have to find the size. And for me, remember I said I picked a size 16. So what I like to do first, because I'm not actually gonna cut this. The reason why I don't cut this is Again, because I'm still not quite sure if this size is gonna fit me. And if I cut it, then it's my only copy of this. So I'm gonna trace it. I'm not gonna cut straight from here. So um, I've seen other sewists do this in tutorials and it's kind of helpful. You can use a highlighter or some kind of pin if you would like to, just to be able to see that line a little bit darker because I'm gonna put some tracing paper on top of this and I'm gonna trace all the way my size 16 all the way around onto a piece of tracing paper. Now where it gets a little tricky is over here and that's okay, you just kind of let it flow and also look out for whatever size 
yours is, you should see like a little pattern. So for example, mine looks like a long line and two short lines, a long line and two short lines, right? So when I'm looking over here, I'm gonna keep following that long line and two short lines, long line and two short lines. And then it's just gonna end up blending over here and that's okay. Don't get too hung up about this part right here. I know it looks a little overwhelming. I'm gonna show you how I put my tracing paper on top of this and trace out the size. Okay, so I brought my tracing paper and I also brought a ruler because I see that on the pattern, there are some straight lines. So it'll just make it a lot easier for me to trace those straight lines if I just put a ruler against it. So I'm gonna give you a close up in just a minute because I know you can't really see. I have tracing paper that has grids on it I don't know if you could see that. Yeah, you can. It has grids on it, and sometimes it makes it a little bit easier, but you could also get, there's so many different kinds of tracing paper. So I usually go to Joanne's Fabrics and I just buy this by the yard. It's a really soft kind of paper um, and really easy to work with. So I just laid this on top of my pattern and I'm grabbing a pencil and my ruler. And I'm gonna start with um, the side that's going to be placed on the fold of my fabric. So over here it says place on the fold. The reason why I'm starting here is because it's a really straight line and it'll be easier for me to start there and this corner. So I'm just pressing down and I have a pretty bright light shining on top of my tracing paper. So I can find where that line is at and I'm just gonna line it up to the line that I see underneath this paper and trace that. I'm gonna trace the corner, just a little bit of the corner because it starts to curve over here since it's a skirt, but I'm gonna trace the corner of the skirt. And that'll help me get started. So I don't know if you can see that, but I have a straight line here that I just traced and the corner right here that I just traced. Now, I'm going to continue to trace up here all the way at the top. You can't really see there. I'm gonna move it a tiny bit. Sorry about that. And I also have, right now I have my tripod right here and it's holding down this piece of paper. But what you should probably do is put pattern weights on here. So let me show you what my pattern weights look like. You can really use anything for pattern weights. I got these just washers from Home Depot and you just place them on there just to make sure that this paper, this tracing paper doesn't move around. If it moves around, you're gonna trace the wrong side. So you wanna make sure um, that everything is down pretty flat or you can use like little glass pieces. So I'm gonna keep tracing up the pattern, I still see that there's a straight line up here that I need to finish tracing. Oops, it got a little off, so I just need to fix that. And then I'm gonna come right back and just zoom you in a little bit closer on this side. This is where all the different sizes were at. And I wanna show you, oh, it's so nice. Actually, this pattern is a pretty straight line, so I'm probably gonna use my ruler again on this side. All right, I'm just gonna hold the camera so you could see a little bit closer. So remember how I did that side edge over here? Those were straight edges, and this is where that everything kind of flows into one. And I have to zoom in over here to look for my size 16. So here's my size 16. I know it might be a little bit harder for you to see. Do you see how I highlighted it right here? It's a tiny bit orange. And I also wanna make sure, I don't know if you could see this right here, it kind of moved a little bit. And do you see how the paper is a little bit moving here and here? That means that maybe something over here moves. So I just wanna check to make sure that everything is flat before I start tracing. Move your pattern weights to support you. And then I'm gonna trace, oh, so hard to do with one hand. And then I'm gonna trace that size 16. I kind of do it a little bit out of time I'm gonna start there and I'm just gonna let it flow into that line that I started over here. So actually it's a little easier if I do it over here. 
I could see the line underneath. And I'm tracing it, tracing it to me all the way to the point over here where the size 16 was at. I'm just gonna kind of stay in the middle of that line. And it's meeting that edge. And then I'm gonna take my ruler because I see that this line where the size 16 is, is a straight line. It's just kind of at a diagonal, but if I place my ruler there, make sure everything is flat. If I place my ruler there, it's actually easier for me to just follow that line. So there's the size 16, and I just to check to make sure my ruler is still lined up with the size 16. And then I'm just gonna draw that straight line move my ruler up a little bit and continue that line to meet up here and underneath here is another point where it just kind of looks like a big giant mess don't worry too much about that look for whatever pattern was your size so remember mine was long line two short lines long line two short lines and then i'm just going to kind of find some middle ground over here and then it eventually just lines up right over here again so I'll show you what that looks like when I'm finished. Okay, I finished tracing all the way around the skirt. All the way up to the top. And also before I move my pattern weights, I wanna make sure to label anything that was on the pattern. So for example, this is important to know that this was the back A and I'm gonna label it size 16 because I might change it later on, who knows. And then I'm also keeping my pattern weights on and just checking to make sure um, that there's nothing else that I need to trace. So there's a line right here reminding you that you need to line it up with the selvage. And right here it says place on the edge of the fold of your fabric. So when you trace this onto your fabric, this edge should go on the fold. So I usually make a symbol that looks like this. I would probably normally do it with a ruler, with arrows pointing towards that line. And those arrows help me remind, and sorry, help me remember that I'm gonna line that up on the fold. That's really important to know because once you cut this pattern out with the fabric, when you open it up, then it'll be full size. Right now it just looks like half size because it's gonna be on the fold. Then I'm gonna move some other patterns and just make sure, um, I'm just moving them right here so the paper still doesn't move out of the way, but I'm gonna double check the pattern to make sure there's nothing else that I need to trace. Sometimes there might be like a little notch right here that you need to trace and that's important, but here's, oh, here's some over here, okay. So these notches, um, are probably, I don't know exactly what they're for right now, but I know that I will need them when I start working with my fabric. Now, sometimes it means they want you to line this notch up with another notch on the front side of the skirt. And so these little lines are really important to trace too. I haven't traced them yet because I didn't notice them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your paper back over and trace where those little notches were. So I have to find my size 16. This one is the size 16. And then I'm gonna draw a little line right there on my pattern, on this pattern paper. And then I'm gonna draw another line up there because I know that those are gonna be important later on. So I put my paper back over. Luckily, I didn't move my pattern weights and I have to look for those notches. Here was one over here and here was one over here. I'm just gonna draw little lines right there and then my next step after that is then I'm gonna cut this out because this is what I'm gonna use on the fabric. Here is what my tracing paper looks like now. I cut it out. This was the back A. I labeled it from the pattern, size 16. I labeled the folded fold. I labeled the two notches. There they are right there. And then I'm gonna put that aside. Um, I still need to do so this was the back. I still need to do the front. I'm not gonna show you that because it's basically the same thing. Um, but I did wanna show you the pocket, for example, because the pocket has some curves and some points. 
and it just looks a little bit more tricky and you'll see that when you're working with pants or shirts or things like that it might look something more like this so again I had to look for my size first and holy crap it's really tiny right so it starts at a zero and then I followed along and found my size 16 right here. And it still has the same pattern, a long line, two short lines, a long line, two short lines. And I already got my pin and I just traced it all the way. Here's one notch that you're gonna trace to. Trace it all the way. I didn't trace that part because it's pretty dark and I don't need to trace it, but I did go all the way down here. Here's another notch that you're gonna trace on the paper. And then over here, I just went real slow and followed it. If you're one of these smaller sizes, it is a little bit trickier because they're super close together. And then over here, it's not a big deal, but here's another notch right here. So be careful for that. And then I'm also gonna draw this line when I put my tracing paper over, I'm gonna draw this arrow because this arrow helps me to know how I need to line up my, how I, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's tricky to say how I need to line this up with the selvage of the fabric. So I'll show that when we start working with fabric. For right now, just make sure that you draw this line too on your pattern paper. Here's what my pocket looks like after it's all cut out. I marked all the notches. There's a notch there, one there, and one there. I drew the green line, which um, I'll be referring to in the next video that I make about how to trace this on your fabric. And then I just labeled it. So, I'm going to look through my pattern to see if there's any other important information that I think that might be helpful for tracing your sizes. And again, just a reminder, the reason why I'm tracing it out like this and not just cutting it directly is because I still don't know what size I am yet. And it's really wise to make a toil, which is like a practice pattern beforehand um, to make sure that it's the right size and that it fits you good. And then you didn't cut into your original um, pattern. I found um, this to be tricky when I first started cutting waistbands. So this skirt has a waistband. Here it is right here. And it has all these different lines, lines right here. And then this is the line that we had already talked about, the grain line. Um, we've already talked about this to placing things on the fold of fabric. So this is going to go on the side of my fabric where it's folded, right? And I have to look for my size in two different places. So I'm looking my, for my size over here. Here I am at a size 16. So when I put my tracing paper over, I'm gonna put my ruler right here. And I usually like to start with that line. So I'm gonna trace this line, trace all the way down and all the way back around and then I'm also gonna mark a notch right here. There's a notch probably right in the middle because I bet that's where you're gonna fold the waistband at. And then I'm also gonna mark these notches. I'm not quite sure what they're for yet, but I'm gonna mark that size 16 here, size 16 here, and I'm gonna mark it over here too. It looks like another size 16 is here and another size 16 is here. And then don't forget to label, I have waistband A a lot of times. I think I forgot to mention the reason why I'm making sure to label things, pocket A for example, or waistband A for example, is because in the pattern that I'm working with, and a lot of patterns that you might work with too, they have different views, different versions of the dress. So this version, the dress has inseam pockets, I think. And then this one has these really cool pockets that lie on the outside of the skirt. So I'm choosing view A, so I'm making sure that when I'm working with my pattern that everything I'm doing has an A in it. If I do pattern B, like pocket B over here, this is an inseam pocket, it's gonna be the wrong pocket. So just double check to make sure that you've decided when you're working with the pattern, you've decided which one you want. So I'm working with this one, that's what it looks like and then that you're also tracing and cutting out 
accordingly. I hope today's video was helpful for you and you were able to get some good tips for cutting out patterns and finding your size. Um, there probably are so many other things that I could have touched on. So for example, if you're in between sizes, you can cut out two sizes. That's called grading. That's something that I didn't really touch on. So if you need help or support with that, let me know. I can also put some links in the description um, to reference some other ideas of questions that you might have. I wanted to show you really quickly what I do with my pattern when I'm done. I put mine on a hanger um, just because one thing I really hate is folding it back up and putting it back in here. <laughs> Honestly, I have to say cutting out and tracing these patterns is really my least favorite thing to do. I kind of dread it whenever I'm working on a new pattern, so I just want it you to know that making this video is helping me just kind of enjoy the process a little bit more. And then I have all my pattern pieces here ready to go. They're all cut and ready. I have them all labeled with my size. I have all of those grain lines that were labeled. I have all of the notches labeled. And on some of my patterns, remember I was showing you how it says cut on the fold. So that's labeled. And then some of my patterns don't say that, they say cut two. So I have that labeled. Um, just make sure that before you cut anything out that you have everything labeled and ready to go. So my next step and the next video that I'll start working on is how do you lay this all out on your fabric and cut that? And um, I'll be talking a little bit more about that with you next time. So. Thank you for joining me and I will see you soon.